All right, going to do a video on the biblical account of the birth of Christ versus the idolatrous Catholic Christmas Christmas nativity display. Because this is something you'll see a lot when you get close to that time of Christmas is you'll see a lot of this this nativity display. And aside from the fact that it's a graven image, I'll be covering that in this video, uh, it's idolatrous and Roman Catholic. This idolatrous Roman Catholic practice uh, is totally contrary to the biblical account of the birth of Christ. And we're going to go over this right now. Because Christmas is a Roman Catholic custom when you get down to the facts of the matter. So what, how does the Bible, how does the, how does the Word of God uh, record the birth of Christ? You know, is it, and does it line up with the nativity scene? I'll put it that way. Uh, so first of all, the first thing to note is that nativity scenes are unscriptural because Jesus is described as a young child when he is seen in the major. But you see, in these nativity scenes, he's always a baby. And Mary's, see, and there's always this huge emphasis on Mary because it's the Catholic Mary idolatry. But uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 7 to 11 says, Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquiring of them diligently what time the star appeared, uh, he sent, and, he sent, and he sent them to write to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Uh, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Uh, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great with exceeding great joy. Uh, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Okay. Also, I should point out something else outside as well. Uh, they like using this account as some some kind of proof that oh, this was the first Christmas. See, they're giving him gifts. Okay, I'd like to point something out. First of all, this was a one-time occurrence. It wasn't some kind of yearly, you know, reoccurring event. And number two, where where is it? Where was it? Even if it was a yearly reoccurring event, where was it ordained by Christ? See, it's not a Christian holiday if it's not ordained by Christ. Okay, Christian is Christ ordained. A Christian holiday. I'll put it that way. Okay, the only day that's ordained by Christ as a Christian holiday is remembering his death. We're going to get into that later. That nowhere does Christ ever ordain. Uh, yearly remembrance of his birth. So anyway, and also on a side note too, it should be pointed out that when the wise men, uh, the wise men were not presented at the birth of Christ like the nativity, depi uh, nativity depicts, uh, Christ is already a young child when they presented him with the gifts, plain and simple. So that's, you know, strike one against the Roman Catholic idolatrous nativity scene. Next point, next thing to note is just the simple fact that these nativity scenes are idolatry. They're a violation of the uh, prohibitions against making images of the Godhead. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. But what do you, what's the, but I guess the nativity scene, I guess that's the exception to the rule. You're still having an image of Jesus Christ, but that's the exception, you see? Yeah, it's idolatry. And on the thing of remembering his birth, okay, uh, it should be pointed out, this is kind of on a side note, it should be pointed out too that remembrance of one's death is actually uh, better than remembrance of the birth. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll get into why I'm tying this in. But uh, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse one, a good name is better than a precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes seven, eight, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Why, why am I pointing this out? Why, why is it better to remember one's death? Well, this ties into the fact that Christ ordained remembrance of his death. Okay? Why? Because it's more important than remembrance of his birth. Okay? Remembrance of his death and, and yearly observance of that, you know, in remembrance is a scriptural practice ordained by Christ. Because again, Ecclesiastes 7 1, Ecclesiastes 7 8, remembers and remembrance of one's death is better than remembrance of one's birth. I'm not good at reading things on a computer, but we see there that uh, it's better to remember your death. Okay? And Christ ordained remembrance of his death but never once did he ordain remembrance of his birth. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 down to verse 26. Here's him ordaining remembrance of his death. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, this is Paul speaking, uh, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink 
as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So it's remembrance of his sacrifice on the cross, his death on the cross is uh, that that observance and basically remembrance of that, that is what Christ ordained, but never his birth. Uh, more proof on that. First Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, uh, where which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. What are we supposed to keep in memory? For I delivered unto you first for I, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ was born in the manger on December twenty fifth. Oh wait, sorry, it doesn't say that actually. How Christ, how that Christ died for our sins, died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again on the third day, third day, according to the scriptures. Okay, uh, where we're never told to remember His uh, birth, because why? You know, again, Ecclesiastes seven one, Ecclesiastes seven eight. You know, uh, it's better to you know the day of death is better than one the day of one's birth. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Yeah observance of Christ's birth, even if Christmas was, even if you're just observing Christ's birth, it's still unscriptural because it was never ordained by Christ. That's just plain and simple. I mean, we're not even going to get to all the heathen practices of Christmas, all the all the other stuff. Just a simple fact is that we're never told to remember his birth. And you never see any examples in the book of Acts anywhere where you see the early disciples or early Christians doing this as a yearly practice. This is a, a man-made custom that was, that was invented hundreds of years after the final uh, chapter of scripture was written. It's Roman Catholic in origin, by the way. It's totally uh, pagan and idolatrous and rooted in Roman Catholic heathenism, which they in turn borrowed from the old Greco-Roman heathen religions. Okay, and also I should point this out too, the fact that Christmas is so heavily promoted by the lost world, should that alone should already be a big red flag to the born-again saints. You know, but you see we have a, a, a certain internet pastor from uh, Arizona and also one from the state of Maine who overlook all of that and will do anything they can to defend their custom because it makes them feel good apparently. That's the, that's the argument I've heard quite a lot too. It's all emotionally based. But the nativity scenes are unscriptural. You know, they're idolatrous, they're graven images, and they do not line up with the scriptural account of the birth of Christ, which describes him as a young child when the wise men are meeting him. But then the nativity scene has the wise men meeting him as a baby. So I could say a whole lot more on that, but I'm not going to go off too much on that. Uh, don't be deceived by Christmas. It's idolatry. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.